Hey, welcome to Boozy Bookshelf, the podcast where I revisit my favorite childhood books with adult eyes and an impaired mind. My name is Ashley, and this week I'm joined once again by my lovely roommate, Crystal. This week we read chapters 10 through 15 of Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I read this book 10 years ago, but never finished the series, and this is Crystal's first time reading. We had so much fun coming up with new theories, so grab a glass of wine and join us on this journey. Do you remember last week when I was telling you how I wanted to read this book from Dimitri's point of view? Yeah, I remember you saying that. I tweeted the same thing and somebody on Twitter replied to me and told me that somebody wrote a fan fiction that is all six books from Dimitri's point of view. And apparently it's like really good. That sounds like it could be a side project. I actually really like that. And I'm still honestly a fan of fan fiction. So I'm game. Yeah, no, I feel like it would be fun even if we just like read one book and do an episode about one book. I feel like it'd still be fun to talk about those. And fan fictions are so easy to fly through. So are webtoons. Oh man, if there was a webtoons of this series, I'd be spending money on it. I would I would be spending money on it. There's also a I think is it called a manga? Manga, but go ahead. <laughs> There's a manga that was published I think by Rochelle Mead. It's on her website. So let's hop right in on to it, Ashley. What's our summary this week? <laughs> <laughs> well, we read chapters, what, 10 through 12, I think? C. Okay, well, a lot happened, so buckle up. Chapter 10 starts out with Rose and Lissa getting caught passing notes in class. The teacher reads the note out loud, informing the entire class that Rose and Jesse had been caught hooking up. Lissa gets to detention since Rose has already maxed out on punishments and can't go to detention. Thankfully, Jesse doesn't seem to be telling people that Rose wanted to be bitten, but gossip about me as parents is spreading. Rose also hears someone gossiping about the Fox incident and is reminded of a time two years ago when Rose and Lissa had snuck out of class to sit in the woods and drink. They had been discussing Lissa's first time having sex when they heard a noise nearby. Ms. Carp found them, took the bottle of alcohol, and started leading them back to the school. They hear a noise coming from a bush and find a raven suffering before dying right in front of them. Lissa touches the bird and it starts moving again, coming back to life and flying away. Ms. Carp grabs Lissa and tells her that she can never tell anyone about that and she tells her that she can never do it again because they'll find her. Back in the present, Mason grabs Rose's attention. He heard about Jessie and tells her that she has bad taste. He says that he's worried about her because everyone is calling her a slut. He also says that he has done some more research about St. Vladimir. The books mostly only talk about St. Vladimir healing people and bringing them back from the brink of death. Rose freezes at that, and Mason tells her that they can get more information from the primary resources, which are books from the time that St. Vladimir lived. Rose finally realizes that Mason has a big fat crush on her and is sad when she can't return those feelings. Then chapter 11 starts with Lissa asking Rose if she needs something to wear to the assembly that night. The queen is coming to the school, and Rose has gotten permission to attend despite her probation. Rose goes to practice with Dimitri after school. Dimitri has been keeping his promise to teach her how to fight. Rose notices how hot he's looking in his gym clothes and then tells herself to stop looking. He shows her a few moves to use on larger opponents and then tells her to try to hit him. After several failed attempts, Dimitri releases her to go to the assembly, but then when he turns his back, she attempts another attack but he's way too fast and knocks her down, pinning her on the map. He tells her to avoid the battle cry next time. Rose realizes that he is still holding her down and that his body is pressed against hers. He seems to be watching her with the same intensity as he had before, and Rose wishes that she could read his mind. She says that she has noticed him watching her a few times since then, and sometimes, if she gets lucky, he'd even smile at her. She even says that she lives for those smiles, though she'd never admit it out loud. Dimitri finally gets up and leaves. Rose is frustrated with herself for crushing on her older mentor and heads back to her room. Later, Rose goes to the assembly for the queen. The common area has been turned into a banquet hall with guardians lining the walls. Rose notices Dimitri among them and thinks about what happened at practice again. The royals enter and Queen Tatiana stops in front of Lissa. She reminds Lissa of the power behind her name and then berates her publicly for not living up to that power. Everyone in the room is shocked, and Lissa feels embarrassed for the rest of the event. After dinner, Lissa runs outside, and Rose follows. Natalie finds Lissa before Rose can catch up, though. Rose spies on them as Natalie tries to comfort her. 
Lissa says that her parents would have hated her for running away, and Natalie reassures her that they wouldn't. It seems like Natalie is trying to figure out why they left, but Lissa confides that she doesn't like how fake the royals are. Rose butts in, appreciating how nice Natalie is. Lissa is vulnerable, and Rose tells her not to do anything that she shouldn't do. She asks Rose if the danger thing is going to happen again, and Rose reassures her. Lissa says that she likes Christian, and then Mia shows up, and she's a bitch again. She realizes that Rose spread the gossip about her family. Mia threatens her, Rose wants to fight her, and then Dimitri appears and breaks them up. Rose doesn't want to leave Lissa while she's upset, but Dimitri makes her go back to her room. Rose stops Christian on the way and yells at him to stop stalking Lissa, and he actually does stay away from her. And then in chapter 12, Rose can't sleep because of the unstable emotions coming from the bond. Rose decides that she needs to go see her, but she can't sneak out, so she tells the school staff that she needs to see Dimitri for an emergency. They call Dimitri and he shows up. He knows right away that something is wrong with Lissa. He leads Rose to the Maroi dorm. Rose finds Lissa crying in the bathroom. She's covered in blood, and Rose realizes that she's cut herself. Lissa begs Rose not to tell anyone and says that she freaked out when she saw It. Dimitri and the dorm matron come in, and they find out that It is a dead rabbit. Lissa had found it in her room and tried to clean it up before Natalie could see it. There had been a note this time saying, I know what you are. You won't survive being here. I'll make sure of it. Leave now. It's the only way you might live. Dimitri and Rose take Lissa to the school clinic, and then Karova shows up, and Dimitri convinces her to let Rose stay for a little while. Lissa admits that she tried to use magic to heal the rabbit. Rose needs to stop Lissa from using her magic, quoting how Miss Carp warned her that things will get a lot worse and they'll take Lissa away if she keeps using it. Rose wants to run away again and Lissa falls asleep after Rose promises not to leave her alone. After an hour, the nurse tells Rose to leave. Rose starts to protest, but then Dimitri promises to stay with Lissa so she can keep her promise. Next day in class, no one seems to know about the rabbit, but people are talking about the queen and the reception. But throughout the day, people stop looking at Lissa and start looking at Rose. Rose tries to ignore it, but it gets out of hand when people start making blood jokes about her. Rose realizes that everybody knows that she fed Lissa while they were away from school and thinks that Christian must have told, but he denies it and blames Jesse. Rose realizes that he's right. Apparently, Jesse has been telling everyone that Rose has let him and Ralph both drink from her during sex. She's been labeled as a blood whore. She wants to fight Jesse and Ralph, but decides that it isn't worth getting expelled. The rest of the day is miserable, and Rose starts to shut down. That night, Rose cries for the first time in years. Then Dimitri knocks on her door. Rose can tell that he has heard the rumors. Rose reminds him about what he told her in the lounge, that the Maroi come first and asks if Lissa is okay. He leads her to a back stairwell. Lissa is hiding. Dimitri gives them a few minutes together. Lissa tries to comfort her and reveals that Mia is behind it. Lissa promises Rose that she's going to take care of it with compulsion. Rose tries to stop her, but then Dimitri returns and tells them that their time is up. All right, so I'm going to start out with Mr. Nagy's kind of a little bitch. I always heard of teachers who would read notes aloud in class, but once you see it was that kind of juice and, like, gossip, why, why would you continue to go on? Yeah, like, why would you keep reading? And I feel like since it's the teacher and that's about two uh, minors... Getting hot and heavy. I feel like it was a little weird to continue once you realize that. Yeah, especially when it was just mentioning Jesse as Jay, and then he looks at Jesse and he goes, I assume that you're Jay. Well, good job. You did a good job. I mean, I'd go after him for child pornography. So, how are you going to read sexy things about sexy kids to teenagers? That's like me reading erotica to my little sister. Like, you just don't do that. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> things going on at this school that I agree with that's so fucking weird because it is brought up how um rose is a more beautiful like attractive curvy woman because she's a damn peer so like i'm pretty sure the teacher turns to rose at some point and is like oh and i'd take it you're the other one da, da, da. they make it a point to bring up camilla conta and it's really just her talking shit about them they do bring up that she comes from a very prestigious family and that she's very be beautiful and popular do you think that's going to play a role, or do you think she's still just world-bending, building? I'm not sure. I I don't remember that name, so I don't think that she plays a very big role in this book, but I don't know. So the big secret thing, the big secret thing, my girl, do you want to reveal the truth? So the big secret thing that was a secret for 10 chapters is revealed, and it is that Lissa can heal animals, and you were right. After a little coaxing, I was right. Um, I finally understood the parallel between Vladimir and Lissa. 
Um, Lissa's able so far to revive dead animals, and that freaks Miss Carp out when she's walking them home. And she tells them to never let her do it again. In an urgent voice, her eyes wild looking, Do you hear me? Nothing. And you can't tell anyone, anyone about what you saw. Both of you. Promise, pr- promise me. Promise me you'll ever talk about this again. I highlighted that whole section because the urgency there is what scared Lissa and Rose and prompted them to leave eventually. And I can really see Miss Carp coming and playing a big role in this. She said, they'll find you. So I think that the they is the danger thing. Yeah, I also want to know why it's okay for Miss Carp to be able to heal in things because they did mention briefly that Miss Carp healed Rose's hands earlier. Well, they did also say before that everybody thinks that Miss Carp is crazy because she always says that somebody's watching her. I don't think that it's okay that she does it. I think that she is just trying to protect Lissa because she doesn't want Lissa to also be watched by whatever it is that's watching her. I thought it was kind of cute and like kind of sweet that Rose realized that Mason likes her and she kind of felt bad because she doesn't really want to let him down, but she she knows she has to. I really like Mason. I wish that Rose liked Mason. I mean, Rose Rose sees that Dimitri and says, "Mm, I need a piece of that ass. I mean, I would definitely want a piece of Dimitri's ass too, so. Yeah, honestly. The other note that I made for chapter 10 was why do Ms. Carp's face scars change? Because it it's mentioned very, very briefly. Maybe she takes on the scars that she's healed. Maybe, but... That might be far out there, but I don't know. Or maybe it changes with how much she uses her magic and whatnot. Do you think she's a shapeshifter? Do you think that's not what she really looks like? I could See, now I can keep going. I... I don't know about that, but it says in the book on page 132, lately I couldn't look at her without seeing those marks by her forehead. Her deep red hair usually covered them, but not always. Sometimes there were new marks and sometimes the old ones faded to nothing. So what is she like? Is she like fighting some sort of creature or is she? I'm just confused about that because I even having read this book before, I don't have any memory of that. Um, I, they definitely didn't give us any context, which leads me to believe that is to be determined or found out once we figure out more about, um, uh, Lissa's powers too. Yeah, I could see that. So, um, I'm ready to hop on to chapter 11 if you are. I have one more thing. Okay, so we learned that Lissa can heal animals. We know that Ms. Carp can heal things. And we know that St. Vladimir can heal things. St. Vladimir has been described as crazy. Ms. Carp has been described as crazy, and Lissa clearly has had some sort of mental decline. Do you think the immediate danger isn't so much as somebody's after them now, but somebody knows Lissa's secret, which is that she's able to do that, and the whole, they're gonna come get you, isn't like some secret society that wants to kill them? Yeah, I think you're onto something there. I'm thinking that the powers that they have that lets them heal things, like just causes them to either go crazy or get depressed or something. I mean, maybe people just don't believe it. Like, at this point, people don't believe it, so... Maybe. Yeah, I... I mean, uh, they don't want them using compulsion, so they clearly don't want them using some type of magic, and what better way to deter people than to not let anybody know? Yeah, I could see that. For Chapter 11, we got some sexual tension... From Rose and Dimitri. And honestly, it was kind of great. Yeah, it gave us more insight into like what Rose is feeling and kind of what Dimitri is. Like, even though he pinned her down and it got kind of steamy, they both realized like, oh, this isn't cool. But I thought it was really cute the way she um, talked about how it gave her butterflies and his smile brightens her day. But then it also made me kind of happy because she did, in fact, start freaking out about the age gap. So that that kind of kind of. Put some band-aids on the relationship with you old Dimitri. Yeah, I mean, you can't get mad at Rose for having a crush. And when they were in that predicament of Dimitri having her pinned down, he did the right thing. He did the thing that he should have done, which is get up and walk away. Um, I like Rose describes Dimitri as admiring when she catches him staring at her. And I like to tell myself that he's admiring her as a proud mentor. And... I kind of just I like the dynamic they have going. They seem like they are becoming friends. 
he's teaching her how to fight and how to protect Lissa. I definitely think he admires her as a pupil right now, and I think that admiration is what's going to blossom into a love later on. I, I honestly didn't mind the sexual tension going on here, to be completely honest. What I did mind was Queen Tatiana, because she's a fucking bitch. Oh my god. When I say my jaw dropped when I read that, holy shit, I almost threw the book across the room and oh my god, what a cunt. Imagine being publicly berated by the queen. Like, you are, you have this awesome name, it has such a strong backstory, you're beautiful, da da da, the name and everything, you're never gonna live up to it. Like, pretty much, you piece of shit, you ran away, go fuck yourself. Like, no. But... To follow up with that, the fact that Natalie was the first one to be there to console her and then for her to get all proby right away, it's kind of suspicious. She knew she was kind of eating it up. I was going to ask you how you feel about Natalie after that scene. I get really suspicious vibes. Um, she's definitely going to be a bigger problem than what I initially thought. Uh, but no, that's... That was my main point right there. I feel like she maybe got some joy out of the public roasting of her cousin, which would be kind of fucked up. But I I feel like our friend Natalie is actually a little bit more sinister than what we're getting told right now. I like it. I like it. Um, Why does Rose hate Christian? Does she actually think he's a psycho loser or is she jealous of his budding relationship with Lissa? I feel like it's a little bit of both. Um, She's very protective over Lissa and the fact that his parents are Strigoi, I feel like really freaks her out. But I feel like the lines between jealousy and genuine uh, fear and discomfort are getting blurred and causing her to lash out in ways. Um, When she stopped him and told him that Lissa thought he was a freak and that she was just too nice to say anything. And then he just kind of stopped and looked out at the garden and then went back to his room. Kind of really hurt my heart a little bit because you could tell he was really enjoying his time with Lissa. But instead of going and talking it out in his head, he didn't want to bother her again. So he let her be. Yeah, that scene made me so sad. I really like Christian. I really like him as like a character. I really like his relationship that's happening with Lissa. And it made me really sad. It made me a little bit angry at Rose, honestly. I just don't understand why Rose would tell him that Lissa thinks he's a freak like I know she's trying to get him to stay away from her but he hasn't done anything wrong to Lissa he if anything he's protected Lissa which Rose should be an advocate for yeah but once again the stigma against Strigoi and the fact that his parents are Strigoi I feel like that like I said is blurring the lines with Rose's thought process she's also jealous but yeah that's true do you have any other notes about chapter 11 Okay, well, chapter 12, um, Dimitri actually shows a lot of trust in Rose as a fellow guardian. I, Because he doesn't question her why she needs to see Lissa. He just knows that she needs to go. And then when they get to the bathroom where Lissa is hiding, he trusts Rose to go into the bathroom alone and find her and calm her down. When I say what she found was the last thing I expected, oh my god, it went from zero to 100 so fast. Like, I thought Lissa would just be, like, crying or upset over Christian not showing up. Uh, The last thing I expected was to have her be found covered in fucking blood. Like, oh my goodness. I was really confused for a second during this chapter because I thought I remembered what happens. But after reading the section where there was a note on the rabbit, I don't know that I do because that note doesn't make sense to what I remember in my brain. The note says, I know what you are. You won't survive being here. I'll make sure of it. Leave now. It's the only way you might live through this. And that note leads me to believe that our theory about A, being whoever's messing with Lissa now and they being someone that's messing with her because she can heal. But I... This note specifically confused me a little bit. It makes a lot of sense for our theory, but it didn't make sense for my memory brain. (laughs) Well, now I'm kind of sitting here wondering, was there any way that Vladimir could be, like, sending her messages from the beyond? Like, if Lissa Lissa and Rose have this bond, maybe it's, like, reincarnation. Maybe this is Vladimir and Anna in the past. That might be a little special twist. I like that theory, but I'm not sure. I... I really think I remember what happens, but this note is throwing me off. I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to read more and see. Um, who do you think is leaving dead animals in Lissa's room? I really don't know right now. I don't think it was Christian. I don't think we'll find out for a while. Um, I thought it was unique that Lissa tried to fix the rabbit, and I feel like that definitely maybe took its toll on her after not being able to save it. 
Yeah, I thought so too, especially since after that happens and then she goes to the bathroom and cuts herself. They had slightly hinted at the fact that Lissa had problems with that in the past. Um, I thought it was unique. We got a little more insight on it. Um, after she tried to clean it up, Lissa said that she just had to get she had this feeling she had to get it out in quotations and just get the bad feelings out so I just think it was unique to throw that aspect in here yeah it really kind of humanizes Lissa in a way because like she is just a teenager she can do this awesome thing but she's just a teenager when Lissa was sent to the hospital or the nurse's station whatever it was I thought it was cute that she was finally able to fall asleep knowing that Rose was going to be there the whole night I thought that was kind of cute I thought it was so sweet that Dimitri promised to stay with Lissa because Rose couldn't. That gave me feelings. Last week, I said that Rochelle Mead needed to give me feelings about Dimitri, and that gave me feelings. Yeah, I was really cute. Or, I am cute, but <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> that was really cute. Um, what did you think about them waking up to rumors about Lissa sucking Rose's blood? I think that Ralph and Jesse can fuck right off. I think, what the fuck, dude? So I didn't realize that they were trying to say that they both fucked her and sucked her blood. You actually helped me realize that during your little synopsis. And just what the fuck? Talk about high school rumor bullshit. But to go as far as making her look like a blood whore? Excuse me? Especially in this society where being a blood whore doesn't just go around school and then the rumor disappears like that sticks to your reputation forever in this society apparently mia convinced ralph and jesse to tell people that because she realized that rose was the one spreading rumors about her family if i could so the way they explain mia's appearance has me full-heartedly believing that i could take her little ass up to the edge of a cliff and punt her off like a football I wouldn't mind to hear that scream on the way down and then a splat. Oh, absolutely. I want Rose and Mia to fight so bad. I want Rose to snap her fucking neck. I want her to demolish Mia. I want Rose to hog tie her up, get a beating stick with rusty nails sticking out of the end, and just slowly beat her to death. I wonder, do you remember in Chapter 9 when Dimitri threatened Jesse and told him never to get involved with Rose again and never to tell anybody about it? I remember that. I thought that was kind of cute. Like, now that I'm less looking at Dimitri with less pedophile glasses, like, some of it is actually really endearing and cute. Yeah, but I'm wondering, because Rose says that when Dimitri knocks on her bedroom door, he seems like he's definitely heard the rumors, and he, like, illustrated Lissa, like, got Lissa out of her dorm and pulled her and, like, snuck her into the back of the Dampier dorm and, like, got her so that they could talk to make Rose feel better. That was really cute. But also, did Dimitri kick Jesse's ass? <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely see in the next chapter, Jesse just suddenly has a black eye. Like, I definitely could see that. I would be all about that. I really hope so. I, I thought it was really cute that he, like, he heard the rumors and used his teacher powers to go get her best friend and make her feel better. Lissa is so heated over the fact that Mia is the one to do this, that she... She's the one wanting to break the rules. She's the one wanting to pulse everybody. And I just know Rose has this like impending sense of doom. Like the moment from this moment on, I feel like we saw Lissa's quote unquote villain origin story. And I feel like we're about to get like bad bitch Lissa. Yeah, no, I think that this is definitely a turning point. I have a note here that says we see a shift in roles as Lissa promises to take care of Rose this time because Rose is always taking care of her. And I'm really excited to see Lissa just be a badass and like take over the school again. Yeah, I'm super excited for the next few chapters. I honestly didn't want to put the book down. Oh, me either. The last question I really have is why does Mia hate Lissa? As of right now, I want to say jealousy. I know it's more deep rooted than that. Um, I want to say part of it is because her of who her parents work for. I feel like she has heard some things or have certain beliefs because of that. Her social standing, I feel like, comes in. Yeah, play. I could see that. I honestly don't know why Mia hates Lissa. I don't remember. But I got a lot of really good feelings about Dimitri this chapter. I don't know. I am I hope we get a few more. Like, I'm honestly, I, I hope we get more cute endearing scenes. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I want to see more scenes of them becoming friends and, like, becoming partners as far as, like, guardian partners. I'm just so excited to be reading this with you. 
I'm so excited to keep reading. Can we read a couple more chapters? Yeah, let's go get some wine. Okay, fine. We can go get some wine and then we'll come back and we'll read more. Fun fact, neither of us want to leave the apartment right now, but we love you guys and we love this book. So we're venturing out into the great unknown. As much as I really don't want to go in public, let's go. This is K-Dog signing out. <laughs> Hey, it's future Ashley in editing. As always, I just wanted to pop in and apologize because we were sick when we filmed this episode. So if you hear coughing in the background or if we sound a little nasally, that's why. I know last week we talked briefly about how Crystal got tested for COVID. We don't have COVID, but we are a little sick. This next section was so much fun to edit, and I think it might be my favorite part that we recorded so far. I had so much fun coming up with theories and talking about a great book with my best friend. If you've made it this far, please stick around and leave us a review on whatever platform you use for podcasts. Reviews really do help us get into the algorithm and build our listeners. If you're enjoying this podcast or if you just want to talk about Vampire Academy with me, please reach out on social media. I'd love to hear from you. You can find us on TikTok and Instagram by searching Boozy Bookshelf, and you can find me on Twitter at Truly Tripping. As always, I apologize in advance for any audio issues with this episode. This is my first breach into the online world, and I'm still learning how to edit. Thank you so much for listening, and give us a follow if you want to join our journey. A mental health check. I need a mental health check too. <laughs> so today we decided to take pre-workout and to put it, to put it, to put it in a, there you go. That right there, that shows where we're at. That shows where we're at right now. Okay. So it's the next day and we haven't even started drinking yet and it's already chaotic. So buckle up buttercup. It's been chaotic since about two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> there was a strange noise behind me and I was like, what's that noise? And when I was asking her what that noise was, my phone started ringing and she goes, it's the phone ringing. And for some reason, it just hit me right at the giggle stick or something. <laughs> just, it tickled her funny bone. It tickled me in the right way. And I answered the call and I was laughing and it was a shit show. And then we got off work and we took pre-workout. We usually don't take pre-workout before we go to the gym, but we did. And we both just did the most the absolute most at the gym oh god I don't even remember reading this I'm so out of it all I know is I would let Dimitri rail me dude I take back everything I not everything I take back most of what I said about Dimitri I really am liking Dimitri now speaking of Dimitri we get we get we get a little we get a little romance in chapter 13 oh my gosh okay I'm gonna do the summary because I'm so excited to talk about this chapter chapter 13 starts with the rumors about Rose spreading around the school and Rose feels terrible all the time but she's more worried about Lissa using compulsion Lissa's only doing it when Rose isn't around Rose forces her way into Lissa's head and sees her compelling Camille is convincing everyone that Rose feeding Lissa is no big deal and that she never had sex with Jesse and Ralph Lissa gets Camille to invite her to a study session later and Camille leaves. Then Christian shows up and makes a joke about her compulsion. Lissa is angry at him for avoiding her after Rose yelled at him. Lissa walks away from the argument and Rose returns to her own head. The next morning, Rose has practice with Dimitri, practices her favorite part of the day now because she doesn't have to deal with the other students. Dimitri is being gentle with her because he knows she's upset. Rose finally hits him a few times, though it doesn't really seem to affect him at all. Dimitri notices that Rose's hands are chapped and bleeding from the cold. He starts cleaning the blood off as Rose worries about losing her beauty like the other female guardians. Dimitri tells her that it won't happen to her. Rose wonders if he thinks she's pretty and tells him that it happened to her mom. Dimitri has noticed that Rose doesn't like her mom. She gets distracted by Dimitri touching her hands. Dimitri tries to get Rose to see things from her mom's point of view and reveals that he was raised in a Dampier commune. He describes them as being full of love and unlike the stories. He also reveals that his father would visit and beat up his mother. Rose realizes that he is still holding her hands, even though he's done bandaging them. Then he reveals that he <laughs> then he reveals that he beat up his dad when he was 13. Rose asks him if that's why he got upset over Jesse, and he says that he got upset for a lot of reasons. He also tells Rose that he knows the rumors about her aren't true. He tells her that she's going to be a great guardian because she understands her responsibilities. 
Rose tells him that she doesn't want to cut her hair like the other female guardians. Dimitri lets go of her hands and reaches up to touch her hair and tells her not to cut her hair. And then, chapter 14, Rose keeps spying on Lissa as she slowly compels the other students. Lissa has been spending more time on her appearance and hanging out with the royals. Natalie starts to seem suspicious. Gossip is slowed, but Rose is still worried that more people are going to notice. Lissa's compulsion seems to be getting stronger, and Lissa is getting a dark feeling of satisfaction. At church, Rose notices Dimitri is having some sort of internal struggle. The priest is talking about St. Vladimir healing people again, and it catches Rose's attention. She finally realizes that Lissa and Miss Carp are the same as St. Vladimir. <laughs> finally. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wait, we're not done yet. <laughs> Later that night, Rose gets sexually assaulted on her way to practice, but Mason steps in to help her. Mason punches him and then he leaves. Mason still has a huge crush on Rose. Rose wonders why she can't return his feelings and realizes it's because she has feelings for Dimitri. Rose decides to flirt with him anyway so that he will send a message to Christian for her. She wants Christian to get St. Vladimir's books from the church attic. She also tells him that she lied about Lissa. And then chapter 15, the next day, Mason brings her the books. She reads St. Vladimir's Diary, which mentions feeling weak after healing and getting irrationally angry or sad. They also mention Shadow Kissed Anna helping him, and Rose remembers how Miss Carp called Rose Shadow Kissed years ago. Miss Carp had frantically told her to stop Lissa and to get her out of school. She compels her to take Lissa away. Then a group of guardians took Miss Carp away. In the present, Mason knocks on Rose's door. He has orders from Lissa to sneak her out. They go to a party in the Maroi dorms. Everyone is drinking and having fun, but Rose is worried about Lissa using compulsion. She says Lissa feels unhappy despite her smile. Mason asks Rose why she isn't drinking, and she remembers what Dimitri said about balancing fun and obligation. Natalie points out that Rose used to be the center of attention and now Lissa is. Xander asks Rose what it feels like when Lissa bit her and Lissa is filled with dark and angry thoughts. It reminds Rose of another party that they had went to before they left school. Someone brought a feeder to that party, attracting a few of the Maroi boys. And this made Lissa anxious and she asked Rose to stop them. Instead of stopping, he takes the feeder to his room. Lissa wants Rose to go stop him, but she feels sick from drinking. Later, she notices that Lissa is missing from the party. Rose finds her in the guy's room, compelling him to destroy everything in the room with a baseball bat. Lissa is filled with dark emotions that Rose has never felt from her before. Lissa makes the guy turn the bat on himself, and Rose frantically tries to make her stop. She finally tells Lissa that she's scaring the feeder. Lissa stops, and the school staff shows up. They blame Rose, and she admits to doing it to protect Lissa. And that was the last time Rose had drank anything, and two days later, they ran away from the academy. So this is, this might be a little, a little off topic, but um, we keep joking at the fact that I'm getting really close to understanding <laughs> what's coming after them. Because I know it's not like a certain people, and I know it's not like some secret order. Is it the more Lissa uses her powers, it says she gets more angry and dark. Is it like the more she uses them, like herself is coming after her? Or is this where I'm just bombing into the depths of hell? Am I wrong? You're not wrong, but that's not the thing. That does happen, and that becomes part of the thing, but that's not the main thing. For fuck's sake. All right. <laughs> all day today so I edited it's the next day by the way since we recorded the other section and all day I edited the first section and I kept talking to Crystal while we were working and I was like you're you get so close and then it just dives off the deep end you get so close and then just <laughs> it's just like gone everyday life it's all right it's all right but anyway do you think so clearly Lissa is trying not to use compulsion in front of Rose because it makes her worried but do you think that Lissa would ever have guessed that Rose is, has actually found a way to jump in her head without Lissa feeling strong emotions? Or do you think Lissa would be mad if she found that out? I don't think Lissa knows. And she probably would be a little upset. But I feel like that's just something she's going to have to get used to because it's going to probably keep happening. Do you think Rose is like Lissa's emotional support animal? Yeah, pretty much. What did you think about that scene with Rose and Dimitri? When he touches her hair? Yeah, so what did you think about the scene where um, Dimitri is bandaging Rose's hands? Because I thought it was so cute. They were both very vulnerable with each other. They were both kind of giving each other some insight into how they grew up. And he grew up in a blood whore commune, and he describes it so differently than the way that Rose perceived it before. And he also beat up his father at 13 years old for abusing his mother, and He's just a fucking badass. That scene definitely threw me back to my high school feels. Again, fan fiction. Like, I could just put myself there. I got all warm and fuzzy. I was, like, grinning while I read it. I love that scene. I'm definitely a Dimitri stan now. 
And I really thought it was cute when she asked if that's why he was so upset about Jesse. And he was just kind of like, I was upset for all kinds of reasons, Rose. Like, it was just the humble beginnings are always so cute. I like how she was wondering if he thinks that she's pretty. And she was talking about how being a guardian kind of does wear and tear on your body and makes you less pretty. And he was like, that's not going to happen to you. And But he didn't say why. But he, he was just like, it's not going to happen to you. You're too... It's just not going to happen. I thought that was cute. And then when he said that she shouldn't cut her hair, and she's like, but the tattoos. And he's just like, you just pull it up. I really like this scene. And it gave me more feelings about Dimitri in a positive way. It gave me a lot of positive feelings. It took away the ick. I don't know. I'm starting to, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to understand the Dimitri thing. Are our days of talking shit about Dimitri over? They are 10 out of 10 over. Unless he does something stupid. Oh, I like how Rose finally got a couple hits in on Dimitri, even though it didn't really do anything to him. I like that we can see her just gradually getting better at fighting. Is she getting better at fighting, or did he let her have a couple wins to make her feel a little bit better about herself after everything that's been going on? I don't think he'd do that, honestly. To build especially... up her confidence to make her be the bad bitch he knows she can be? Maybe. I don't know. I like the idea that Rose is just getting better and becoming more of... I want to see Rose beat Dimitri in a fight at some point. Like a true fight. <laughs> Oh, I, I bet we will. I bet we will see that. Dimitri seems to have a lot of respect for Rose's mom. Um, I know that her mom is like a really respected guardian and a very like well-known guardian and like also a badass. I like that he's trying to somewhat rekindle their relationship. I'm not sure I highlighted it, but he was like, well, it was the best thing for you, her letting the Academy raise you. And he was like trying to make her feel better about it. Yeah, I felt like he was trying to make Rose see her mom's point of view because Rose has her heart set on being a guardian and protecting Lissa. And if she were to get pregnant and have a child, like obviously she would give that child to the Academy so that she can also protect Lissa and be a guardian, which is what her mom did. And Dimitri kind of made her see that. I thought that was really sweet. So I want to talk about Natalie. I know we talked a little bit shit about her in last night's episode, but man, like she is very quickly becoming suspicious. Like right off the bat, she was rambling away trying to get information, like being like, oh, you're, you're kind of getting cozy with the Royals. And she started going on and on. And Man, I just feel like I was right from the get-go. She's not as sweet and innocent as she seems. I like how Lissa derailed the conversation. It started out with Natalie inviting Lissa to her friend's dinner, and Lissa told her that she had plans with the Royals, so Natalie did what Natalie does best and just rambles her ass off. And then Lissa derailed it as, you know what, on second thought, I will come to that dinner. And I feel like our sweet little Lissa is becoming wiser and I like it. I think Lissa is kind of a badass in these scenes. I mean she's felt so powerless and vulnerable with everything that's been going on and she's just kind of taking that power back but also what do you think Natalie's got going on? Do you have any theories about why she's suspicious? Um I don't but from what I've learned about doing these podcasts is the more we talk the more ideas I come up with so I'll <laughs> chime back in for that one but Back to Lissa's compulsion. We find out she's able to compel two people at once, and apparently that's not a very common thing. Yeah, so Rose actually, when she was reading St. Vladimir's diary, she says that it's pretty obvious that St. Vladimir is doing compulsion on a mass level. And Lissa compels not only two Maroi, but two Maroi at the same time, which being able to compel other Maroi's is apparently unheard of. So... Again, with the parallels between Lissa and Vladimir and Ms. Karp. Also, how did you feel about Ms. Karp compelling Rose to take Lissa away? That was fucking nuts. That gave us so much more insight. No, I really love, I don't know, I really got a, that was probably my favorite scene out of these three chapters, honestly. It gave me so much insight. I feel like Ms. Karp is not crazy. She's on to something, just like I'm on to something, but you keep saying I should know, and I really just have no fucking idea right now. You bring it up, my mind goes blank. <laughs> I'm not saying you should know, I'm just saying you're getting so close and then just losing it about halfway through. You're about 50% correct and 50% lost, but do you have any theories about Miss Carp at this point? Do you have any ideas about Miss Carp in the future or... Even Miss Carp two years ago when she got taken away by those people, do you have any idea what happened after that or what's going to happen in regards to her? So I don't really know 
what I think they did to her when they took her away. I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. Like, my first thought is lobotomy, but that wouldn't really make sense. <laughs> but I know she's going to definitely play a bigger part later on. I don't understand if everybody knows. So does everybody know she's able to heal? No, I don't think so. I think that they, the danger people, the they was aware of it, and they were probably following her and doing what they're now doing to Lissa. And I think that she was trying to get help for that, like telling people that that was happening to her and nobody believed her, so they thought that she was crazy. Or she might actually be crazy. Do you think – what do you think Ms. Carp's going to be doing? Do you think – do you actually think she's going to play a big role or do you think that when they took her away, we never see her again? They're going to take her away again? No, they already took her away two years ago, remember? Yeah, but she's their teacher now. No, she's not. Rose has not seen Ms. Carp since they got back to school. <laughs> well, there is a big plot hole I was curious about. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering about, because, like, if she had, que- like, obviously, if she could just go ask Ms. Carp about these things. <laughs> Okay, I think that is the huge plot. I think that might be part of why I get so close and then I just drop off. Because in my head, Miss Carp, I thought it was like a hush hush thing. Like they saw each other in the hallways, but they looked at each other, but they never acknowledged one another because Miss Carp was like, I know what you are and you know what I am. And this is fun. That's finito. Like- no, Miss Carp got taken away two years ago and. Rose hasn't mentioned seeing her since she's been back in school, which if I were Rose, I'd be like, hey, where's Ms. Carp? I've got some questions. That bitch is dead. You think she's dead? She probably left some like scripts. She probably left like books and notes for Lissa because clearly she understood Lissa's power. And no, but that bitch is dead. Do you think she killed herself or do you think somebody killed her or what do you think happened? Well, if we're going to keep going with this St. Vladimir thing, she probably killed herself. I like it. I like is it. That, is that on the right path? You're getting close. You're getting real close. Man, I don't know. Like, the gears are turning. I'm sure there's smoke coming out of my ears. You're so close. Lissa self-harms. Lissa self-harms. She does. She does it to get away from the pain. Does she absorb the pain from whoever she's healing? And is that what's making them crazy? I don't know about that. I don't think that's explained in this book. <laughs> Is that where I go horribly wrong? That's where we hit the wall, yeah. You just hit the wall. (laughs) You hit the wall that I've been telling you about. Um, Okay, look at me. Look at me. Um, Okay. So. (laughs) God, I want to tell you so bad, but I can't. I just want everyone to know that Crystal is in a ball on the floor, um, thinking as hard as she possibly can about Miss Carp right now. So I, th- I think I'm struggling with the fact I thought there should only be one healer. St. Vladimir never specialized in a power. We don't know what Miss Carp specialized in, but we, we could assume nothing. And Lissa has not specialized. Healing. What are you? Stop Googling things. <laughs> I was about to be slick. Okay. Um. That's not correct. That's, I wish you had your mic on. She looks at me and she goes, okay, so St. Vladimir can tell the future. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So- <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I keep wanting <laughs> <laughs> okay, St. Vladimir heals people. Jesus heals people. Lissa heals people. Miss Carp heals people. Vladimir had Anna. Lissa has Rose. Who the fuck did Miss Carp have? Hold on. What do you think shadow kiss means? This is important. Um, so I'm it's gonna be hard to get out into words. I feel like I understand it, but it definitely has something to do with the healing powers and her not specializing. I from so I guess my f- next question was actually going to be somewhat similar to that. Do you think since Anna and Rose are able to feel Vladimir's and Lissa's feelings and like kind of jump into their head, do you think the connection kind of goes both ways a little bit and they're kind of able to absorb when they jump into their head? I have no idea, but that's brilliant. That's not talked about in this book, but that, that would be brilliant. Do you think that kind of helps 
keep them in balance so like maybe that's what helps Saint Vladimir not kill himself. That's what I've been picking up. That's not what shadow kiss means. That makes so much sense. But I think that you're like a book ahead. Like, I don't think that that is discussed in this book at all, but that makes so much sense. I'm going to jump on that theory with you. I like that theory. Write that down (laughs) quick. Since I feel like that would make sense though, because like I said, is Rose list as emotional support animal was Anna Vladimir's. It's like, yes, they're able to jump into their head and kind of like see where they're at and save them. But I feel like shadow kiss would mean they take some of that darkness away too. I don't. How how does somebody become shadow kissed? What's your theory on how somebody becomes shadow kissed? Let's say healed Rose, and I feel like Vladimir may have. Wait, there's no way Rose was Miss Carp's shadow kiss baby either. Do you think it's possible that Miss Carp just never healed some like from the brink of death? From the brink of death. There you go. I have cold chills. There you go. The face, the face you just made when you realized. Oh my god, Rose almost died. That's why she's shadow kiss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna be so loud our poor neighbors okay is that is that where i kept going horribly wrong oh, that is so simple too i literally already thought that <laughs> okay so holy shit oh my god okay now that we're on the same page yes miss carp doesn't have a shadow kissed guardian because she never brought anybody back to life so Anna was shadow kissed to Vladimir because he brought her back to life. And Rose is shadow kissed to Lissa because Lissa brought her back to life in the car accident. And they are shadow shadow kiss basically me. So the bond. Oh, oh God. Hold on. <laughs> oh, did we, you know, you know this. We already talked about this. The bond was formed between Rose and Lissa after the accident because we have already talked about this. How has this just been going over my head the last two fucking days? Yeah. We talked about this, um, I think, in, like, chapter 9 or – no, it was, like, chapter 8. So Rose died during the car accident. Lissa healed her. And then they got bonded after the car accident. So anybody who's bonded is – Shadow kissed. I'm so excited you figured it out. I was, it, was, it was getting real difficult to talk to you about this. <laughs> You got real patient. First, I didn't know Miss Carp was <laughs> expected to be dead. Second, I just... I'm an idiot. But do you think Miss Carp is dead? Man, with the way this book is going, I can definitely see her making a comeback. She might be dead, but she's probably alive. Do you think she ran away? You're so close. Did she run away so she could... I feel like she left books and stuff. I feel like she's helping from beyond the grave. I don't know. I really don't know where the fuck else you can go with this, Ashley. Okay, that's okay. I think I think we find out soon anyway, so I'll let that one slide for now. But you're so close. This is so difficult to not just tell you. She's a fucking Strigoi! <laughs> oh my god! They turned her into a Strigoi?! Well, she was taken by guardians, so in order for her to become a Strigoi, what does she have to do? She killed a fucking guardian?! You go, Miss Carb! Holy shit! Right now. <laughs> you were right, 10 out of 10, talking about knowing your bestie and roommate. Holy fuck! All I saw was the word Strigoi, and I was like... <gasps> oh my god. Nah, that was, that was really fun to witness. <laughs> Fucking Strigoi, bro. Do you think she went crazy and killed somebody to become Strigoi? No, I think she really wants to protect Alyssa. I mean, they did say not all Strigoi are bad. Like, not all Strigoi kill everybody. Did they say that? Because they described the Strigoi as, like... Oh, maybe that was us. Maybe I was like, there's always some good... I think that that was your theory. I don't think that that was actually mentioned in the book. I mean... She had to have gone crazy. Like, it was after she... So, St. Vladimir tried to kill himself. Lissa self-harms. And Miss Carp Went crazy. But I don't feel like it's the... I feel like it's whatever it is is what makes them go crazy. Whatever what is. Who's they? Who's going after them? I don't think it's the danger that makes them go crazy. I think it's the ability that they have to heal people i think that you're on to something with them sucking the hurt out of them i mean that would make sense though because the dampier 
are able to, they're stronger, faster, which also mean they're more strong-minded, which would make sense. That's why they're able to do that, especially if it's a um, shadow kissed bond. I'm so excited I figured that out. I felt, now I feel even more stupid, but you were staring at me so intensely. You were like, you got this. Yeah, but I have a couple more things to talk about, I think. Um, Yeah. Rose told Christian that she lied about Lissa's feelings, but now Lissa is hanging out with Aaron. How does that make you feel? I feel like Christian was a petty little bitch. I feel like Lissa gave off very clear signs. She had no idea what the fuck was going on, too. Everybody knows Rose would lie and do anything for uh, Alyssa. Like, everybody knows. Of course she would lie to him. I don't feel like she's hanging around Aaron for the reasons everybody else. I think it's just her way of getting in with the Royals more. And I feel like if she were to just, like, communicate with Chris, I do kind of ship him and Alyssa, so... I did not like how when Christian approached Alyssa, she looked around to make sure that nobody saw them together. I need justice for Christian Ozera. I do too. I love Christian. Good, me too. It actually hurt my soul when he, what he say? Oh, using your compulsion to make you seem like a two faced bitch. Although that was kind of harsh, I was like, our buddy Christian has some backbone. But I, I do hope they become something more. I ooh, his parents being Strigoi. Does that come into play? Because Miss Carp's a Strigoi. I don't think so. Well, I. D- not in this book. I don't know about later, but I don't think that his parents make an appearance. I think his parents are dead. I thought it was they were just Strigoi, but also here's a question. I mean, in every book, like series and movie series, there's always some twist. What if we do find out that Strigoi do have some humanity in the future books? What are I don't I feel like I'm still completely open to that idea because they don't want anybody thinking healing is true. Of course they're going to stick What they want these kids to believe, they're going to stick to their guns. I feel like we're going to see a whole other race of vampires. I want to see a main character become a Strigoi. Like someone in their main friend group. I want to see one of them become a Strigoi at some point. I feel like we are definitely going to see a villain origin story in this book. Oh, what if Mia turns into a Strigoi? We were talking about how we think that Mia is going to get some sort of character development at some point. What if she comes like the biggest villain of the series at some point and becomes Strigoi and like is trying to hunt them all down? I, but she's a tiny little thing. I can see how like being more agile and small, but like I just feel like the way they personify her, if that's the right word, or like perceive her, I just feel like I could snap her like a toothpick like I told you I feel like I could punt her off a cliff like a football so I just remembered something <laughs> <laughs> does she get punted off a cliff like a football <laughs> no but I just rem- I said that I oh god oh god I just remembered something oh my god oh my god oh my god I can't tell you oh my gosh okay um <laughs> do you have any more notes about this chapter <laughs> no ma'am I still love Christian. I still love Mason. I'm starting to love Dimitri. I really liked the scene where he was bandaging her hands. I liked how they were both vulnerable with each other. I like that you can slowly see a friendship forming between them rather than like, say, in Twilight, where one minute they were bickering at each other and then the next minute they were in love with each other. I did not like that. I like how they actually have a relationship forming here. Yeah, the slow, gradual build, like I said prior. I love the humble beginnings of like backstories, which Twilight was cute in its own way but real life it's more you start out slow and like build a relationship I just love it I think it's adorable I'm very excited to see where this leads because it's not as creepy as I once imagined yeah no I agree um what did you think about Dimitri beating up his dad okay so I thought that was pretty badass I highlighted most of that but you um touched on that pretty hardcore I like that he is quick to protect his own I like that he was very honest about where his mom and him lived. I feel like that was some kind of vulnerability that he doesn't have with anybody else. And I also kind of feel like he wanted to tell Rose to just also be like, oh, I always got your back, honey. Yeah, I like that when Rose was like, oh, speaking of blood whores, I'm not one. And he was like, no, I know. Like, I know. I made my heart warm up so fucking much. Yeah, I thought that that was so cute. And I... I'm 
so weirdly okay with this now <laughs> compared to last week where we just talked shit about Dimitri for 45 minutes, even though most of it got cut out. Um, no, I'm like weirdly okay with this now. I feel like all I needed was these five chapters to just make me like Dimitri. Yeah, I I think you're really onto something with the shadow kiss pulling the bad thoughts away from the Maroi that they're bonded to. Um, it actually, I just thought about this right now. Um, in St. Vladimir's diary, he mentions how shadow kissed Anna helps him deal with the demons he refers to them as. You don't think Rose is like blacking out from all this and doing this shit herself, do you? I really like that theory, but I don't think that it's accurate. But I, I really like where you're going with that. Because from what I'm getting, a lot of this is they're their own worst enemy and they need help from like saving themselves from themselves. One of the characters actually accused Rose of doing it at one point. Do you remember that? I forget who it was. It might have been Ralph. Of course they're going to accuse Rose, but I, I, that's not even a possibility in my mind. Okay, good. Because <laughs> what do you think about Lissa being popular again and using compulsion on everybody? So the more Rose's notice, the more Lissa com- uh, compels, the more she gets like a dark satisfaction from it. Holy Lanta, do you think Strigoi or initially started with these healers just slowly going mad? Like in killing another um Roy? Do you do you think that's what led to it? I don't know, but I really like that theory. This is why I can never watch TV shows because I guess so much. <laughs> I really like I don't know. Um if that's true, it's not mentioned in the first book at all as far as I know, but no, I I really like that theory. I mean, it would make sense as to why they don't want any healers, why nobody knows about it, because maybe the more they do it, the more, quote unquote, mad they are. And maybe that madness took over sometime, made them accidentally kill somebody else. And then what do you know, Strigoi, bam, their thing. So wait, can Maroi become Strigoi by just like accidentally killing somebody or do they have to feed off of them until they die to become Strigoi? Uh, What I got from it is... It has to be feeding feeding related. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, no, I like that theory. I don't know. I feel like there's got there's got to be a reason why it was pretty much cut out from history. I feel like, or why it was so. I, how do you? Why it become why it became a part of religion and not everyday like knowledge? You know. I feel like the people that have this healing power are just not very common as well. And so people think that, oh, they're a saint because they can heal people or they're crazy because they think they can heal people. One of my theories now is that we've been talking, what if Lissa is a distant relative of St. Vladimir, but they tried to eradicate his family and the more they weed, like maybe Miss Carp and Lissa are somehow related, but that's besides the fact. But... Maybe that's why Miss Carp was like, you need to keep this a secret. Nobody's supposed to know. Da, da, da. Like, maybe Miss Carp is, we, there's some good in us. We don't all go mad. I feel like she maybe became Shigoi to try and save her own life. But I do, I'm not sure where I'm going with that. But do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I actually really like that idea as well. I don't know about that, but I really like it. Oh, there's so much to think about now. But then Miss Carp also just warned Lissa, like, stop using your power, stop doing this, this, and this. And part of me also feels like that's because the more, quote unquote, mad she'll seem, the more she'll seem like Miss Carp, and they'll be like, oh, I know something's up. Like, oh, you're like where I was going. Maybe they're distant relatives and they tried to eradicate that heritage because maybe they had more power. Maybe it, it's just, I feel like I'm onto something here. Yeah, no, I really like that a lot. Um, do you have any last thoughts, questions, or predictions to throw in for this episode? No, but I just learned I need to start making a note of all my conspiracies. Okay, well, I'm out of questions, so do you want to wrap this up and then... Go get more wine? Yeah, we can go get more wine and we'll record another one. We worked out a lot today. We did. We deserve it. We'll see y'all later.
Thanks so much for listening. I upload a new episode of this podcast every Tuesday. If you're still here and you enjoyed our drunk ramblings, give us a follow and read along with us. I wish I could post a poll or something like Instagram because lately I've been wanting to do bonus episodes talking about the other books I'm currently reading. If you'd be into that, please let me know on social media. But again, we'll be back next Tuesday. We'll see y'all then.